chapter 25, verse 13. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refreshes the soul of his master. Uh, you know, a hard time of working in harvest, and just to get an air conditioning effect, a natural air conditioning, to relieve the sweat and, and uh, the hard work, is likened to a, a, a faithful messenger, somebody who you can trust, that outside of death, that message will get to the person intended. And it speaks of the refreshing the soul of the master. Listen, back before radios all the time, when David and his army, he would send faithful messengers to the troops, back to the kingdom, back to Israel. You needed somebody who had to be faithful. And I'm thinking of, I'm trying to think of, there's a story in the Bible where uh, it had to do with Absalom and Joab. There was a man, a messenger, sent, you know, send me, send me, send me. And Solomon's like, no, I mean, not Solomon. Uh, Joab's like, no, I'm not going to send you. Then he, he picks another guy. He says, listen, go tell King David what you saw. The other guy goes, oh, send me, send me, send me, send me. And Joab's like, all right, go ahead. And that one outruns King da outruns the, the, the servant, gets to King David first, and then David says, well, what's going on? Well, I don't know. Good report. The other one shows up and brings David the, the news from the battlefield. What's the news? Your son was killed. One didn't have a message at all and wanted to go. One had the faithful message. And I'm telling you today in churches, there are no faithful messengers or there are very few. They bring all kinds of lilies and, and flowery bumblebee messages, but no hell fire, no brimstone, no smelling of the doors of hell being opened, no condemnation of sin. More and more every day. Churches are falling. And it says, as the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him. These people that are in the pulpit today are not sent by God. And they were sent by God and have fallen away. They have become unfaithful messengers. And have fallen to the enemy. Whoso boasts himself of a false gift. What would that be? I can speak in tongues. I can heal people. All right? Come with me to a to the nearby hospital. Let's go have some fun. I tell you what. If you can heal people, let's see how long we can sit outside the emergency room and stop them from going inside the emergency room doors. And make the hospital go bankrupt. And get thrown off the property because we're healing people and, and they won't get no money by taking care of people. You know what I'm saying? Let's get let's buy a police scanner and we'll go to every accident and every ambulance call before the ambulance gets there and, and you can heal them before they get an ambulance bill. See, you can heal them and then have them not get a bill. Why don't you do that? It's like clouds and wind without rain. That's a disappointment. In verse 13, you got the refreshing of a harvest. In verse 14, you got your crops, and wow, here comes clouds, and here comes wind, and the, clock, the, the, the crops wither because there's no rain. Disappointment. 
Ain't any false gift. Again, that churches proclaim to have. We got 15,000 people saved in a 3,000 people town. Uh, something wrong with the numbers. You know what I mean? By long forbearing patience. We today we're holding our streets on the sign. The walk sign kept saying, "Wait, wait." For one hour, wait. Never told you to go. I told you to wait. You know that was God speaking to us. We already gone. See, we already go all in our world and preach the gospel. We'll just wait. <laughs> By long forbearance is a prince, Luke. 11 a persuaded and a soft tongue breaketh the bone you know you you nag enough that woman went up to the king and the king's like got to the point listen I don't fear God I don't fear anybody but this woman is a pain in my butt now, I'm only going to answer her, so get her off my back. Those two women that, that stood before Solomon about the baby. Solomon could say, just get out of here. Man, they, they fought right there in front of him. Keep your prayers going until God says stop. Keep on the streets. Keep knocking on doors. If they don't like you at one door, go to the next door. Jesus said, listen, if they don't like you in this city, wipe off the dust off your shoes and go to the next city. From the response we get, Daytona Beach is not dead. There are people who appreciate us being there. And all we were doing is just holding signs today. Very little tracks got out. Very little preaching. It's only the merchandisers that hate you. We're making silver signs to great God as a diet. We're losing our money. That's what it's all about. A soft tongue breaketh the bone. You ever read what James says about that tongue of yours? You ever think about what your words can... You know, they say that, that women today, they have this bone problem. Ostrich, postage, or something like that. I'm saying it wrong. You know, maybe because of all the backlash that their husbands give them with their tongue. I mean, the husband's tongue. Listen, I'm a man. I hang around with men, married men, and I hear what they say about their wife. I think it's rude and crude. I have seen, heard, and witnessed the tongue against the husband against the wife to her face. You're not making her healthy. You're driving her down. And the Bible says that she is the weaker vessel. Be careful what you, what you do with your tongue. And the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 12, every idle word you will give an account. You will have to give an account to God. Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. Least thou be filled therewith. What a great, what a great one for Thanksgiving. And vomit it out. Never in, overindulge. Honey is a great natural sweetener. I believe it's three or four places Solomon writes about honey in Proverbs. 
Because you found it, eat it. It's good for you. But man, don't do too much. Listen, the Bible is great. It's honey. It's natural. But you got to work. You got to love your wife. You got to take a shower. You got to clean the house. You got to take care of the kids. You can't become a monk. You're no, no good. You cannot spend your whole life on one specific thing. Life has many avenues that you have to do. As natural as honey is, don't take too much. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house. Least he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. That's called wear out your welcome. You know, when you leave the house that night, whenever you leave, and, you know, and the, the husband and wife, that guy keeps coming over. We don't even invite him. He keeps coming over. And when he comes over, wish he leaves. Man, I wish I I would have thought you know putting our our pajamas and and our, our uh, night clothes on it would give them the point. The Bible says you can wear out your welcome. Solomon war warned you. A man that bears. False witness, Exodus 20, verse 16, against his neighbor is a maw. That's not the shopping. A maw is a splinter tool. A sword and a sharp arrow. And not three of those things are used for good when you're talking about a person. You don't use a maul on a person. You use it like a kind of axe kind of thing. A sword, when you use it on somebody, is not for the good. And a sharp arrow. Deadly wounded things. And that's what God compares to through Solomon, the Holy Spirit, you're lying against a neighbor. And, in, and when Jesus Christ was brought to trial, they found all kinds of false witnesses. So many false witnesses that their false witness didn't go with the false witness. Must be a political campaign meeting, I guess. Confidence in an unfaithful man Run that back to the verse 13. It's an unfaithful messenger that I spoke about. Confidence in an unfaithful man, a man in a pulpit, is a time of trouble in a time of trouble. You got trouble and you turn to an unfaithful man. It's like a broken tooth. And a foot out of joint. Second Chronicles 28, 21. It's pain and awkwardness. It's when you turn around and battle and that person is not there. When you go through years of marriage and the spouse is not there. When you grow up as a child and the parent is not there. When a pastor go with church and the people are not there.
You could be a toothache or a limp to somebody. Don't be. As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather, how's he going to get heat? How's he going to get warm? And yes, it does get cold over in Palestine. Like it does get, it does get cold in Florida, people. Warning you. And as vinegar upon nitre. Now, Jeremiah 2.22 is speaking about as a soap. Vinegar upon the nitre spoils. No use. So he that takes a garment in cold weather is a thief. Deuteronomy 24, 13. Leaving someone cold and shivering. And as vinegar to nighter, where you can't use it, it's spoiled. So is he that singeth country music to a heavy heart. I'm, he that singeth songs to a heavy heart. Someone who's got a lot of problems in their life. You do not need to get into country western music. You would vast avoid that. You would vast avoid the radio. With a heavy heart, you'd be more likely to turn to your knees to the Lord. And yet, how many bars with their music are the heavy heart and the drunken heart listening to this slop called music and song? You know, your beer, your lost girlfriend, your dog, and your pickup truck, and your rifle. Oh, yeah, those are great combination when your heart is heavy. And then you wonder why this country's turned into violence. If thy enemy be hungry, we just read this in Romans chapter 12. If thy enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. Matthew 5 44. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. 2 Kings 6 18 to 23. Love thy neighbor, even if it's he your enemy. And give it to him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may do good to him rather than wickedness. You may break down those walls or you may build up stronger walls. But what this verse is telling you. And here's the main frame of this verse. You ready? Ready for the philosophical lesson of today. Do right. Isn't that really so hard? Jesus done right. Do you think that 5,000 and the 4,000, do you think they all love Jesus? Man, no sooner he feeds the 5,000, he goes telling about the, the bread of heaven and he talks about man of man. 666, he had people walk away from him. Do good. Why? For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. I said, <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to burn his head. No, you, that's not what it means. 
You're going to make him a hothead. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You may make it worse. You may just throw alcohol on your burning wound already. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. You may get him angrier. And the Lord shall reward thee. How about that? The north wind driveth away rain. So does an angry countenance and a backbiting tongue. Ephesians 4.26 Let's give him an angry look. When somebody backbites your tongue, look at him like, mm. I mean, have you ever done anything guilty? And when you see that person, you, you, you just get that guilt. And you wonder if they know what you did. Well, if somebody's back by you telling you, you just, you don't even, well, give them a look, an angry look. Or a saddened look, like, I'm surprised you would do that. But you don't even need to say a word. And listen, if God is working on it, the conscience will kick in. And the conscience kicks in. Do you not believe that God will work on that heart? When that guy's lying in the bed trying to fall asleep that night or any night? See, you don't always have to open up your mouth and fight. It's letting God do. It is better to dwell in the corner of a housetop. Here we go again. Than with a brawling woman in a wide house. 29.9. Oh, excuse me. 21.9. Much space and, and and or rooms, but her brawling will go through the walls. It will go through the ceiling. <clears throat> As cold waters, how oh, I like my water, nice and cold, to a thirsty soul. So is good news, and that's the gospel, good tidings. That's what gospel means, good news, good tidings. From a far country. John 7, 28, John 4, 10, Revelation 7, 17. And news, N-E-W-S, north, east, west, south. How's that one? Take the letters of news and go north, east, west, and south. You know, if you if you can't get people to receive Christ here, go to a far country. Go in you know, all the world and preach the gospel. A righteous man falls down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. There'll be a lot of righteous people going to fall down in front of the wicked when it comes to when they get their credit card bills. You know, righteous people who give up before the wicked, who give in to the wicked. They don't stand with their armor. And it says before the wicked. Don't you fall down before Satan. Don't you give up to Satan. You are a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. You have taken the water of life that's Jesus Christ and corrupted it. That's the churches around America growing to the world.
You go to some of these churches today and take a drink of the fountain or the spring they have, and it'll kill you. And you'll wake up in hell thinking that you were saved. It is not good to eat much honey. 1 Corinthians 11, 7. So for men to search their own glory is not good. Revelation 3, 16. Don't go out and have people praise you. Don't do it for the praise of man. You're foolish. It's not natural. He that has no rule over his own spirit, 1 Peter 2.11. He that has no rule over his own spirit. They can't put the bottle down. They keep lighting that cigarette. They keep watching those things they weren't supposed to be watching. They keep reading things they're not supposed to read. They keep doing things they're not supposed to be doing. Say no to sin. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city. That is broken down and without walls. It's vulnerable. Chapter 16, verse 32. Here you are. But Satan and the enemy can come right on in. You know why America has trouble with immigration? She never built any walls. America is an unwalled country. When you have a wall around your city or around you, there's only a certain amount of passages that can come into your life or your city, and the only way they can come into your city, right, is through those passages. You can see somebody coming up and over your wall like they're not supposed to be. But if you ain't got no walls, they can just come right on in. And I'm trying to think of John's, John Bunyan, you need to read Holy War. It completely describes this verse. The ear gate. The eye gate. Or seeing gate. I forget what you... How the enemy let Satan in. Then once Satan got in, Satan tried to keep God and Jesus Christ out. You need to read Holy War by John Bunyan with this verse. Because even if you have walls and gates, if you let the enemy come marching right in, you're bound for trouble. Don't you think it was simple for Joshua to enter Jericho when the walls came down? Abimelech goes into a city. He climbs his tower. The woman throws a millstone down and cracks his head open. A city without is broken down without walls. A Christian would be. You don't have the, the fortress. The mighty fortress is our God. 